Hello guys, welcome back. Welcome to the new video where I'm going to show you the multimodal retrieval using Llama Index. Until now, what we have done is we have either text or in the last video, I also showed you how you can import things from the tables also in the PDF or .stm files. But we haven't dealt with the images, right? Let's say that you have a document where there are images as well as the text. And if you, maybe let's say you gave a query to the retrieval, it also retrieves the text as well as the images. This could be a really good approach and you can use this uh, approach to any of your uh, scenarios or use cases. Just before going through this, I have created five different videos already of Llama Index. If you want to know what is Llama Index and things, please refer to this video. But now in this one, let's go through the multimodal. And the reference to this particular video or this notebook is from the official notebook provided from Llama Index. And there is a good blog post from Wengi. So she has explained how you can extract, let's say, the boards out of the documents. You have a really good use case there. Please refer to this blog post also. And I have, I have taken references from both of these places. Just to highlight here, we are going to build a multimodal retrieval system using Llama Index, as I said before. What we are going to use is we are going to use the OpenAI's clip model and we are using this particular model, VITB32. I will show you what are different models available for the image embeddings. We haven't dealt with that before, right? And then instead of OpenAI's embedding, we are going to use the VAAI BGE base EN V1.5 model. This model performs better than the open AI is embedding according to this benchmark. You can go through this benchmark and see which models are on the base for the embeddings. Hugging Face has done really great job here. And then we are going to use the open AI's model, GPT 3.5 Torvo, as LLM for text response synthesis. Now, what are the steps that we are going to follow? That might be the really good walkthrough for you already in the, in the beginning. What are we going to follow? This is the steps here. So first we will download the text and images raw files from the Wikipedia articles. And then what we will do, we will use or index the text using the particular BAAI embeddings. And we will index the image using the clip embeddings. Both the text and the image embeddings after the embedding part is done, we need to store it somewhere. Right? For that, I haven't created video about quadrant before, but now we are going to use the quadrant and we will store that into different collection. Let's say for images, we will create different collection and for the text, we will create the different collection. And when we ask some query, we will get the images as well as uh, the text from both of those collections. So that is how it works. By the way, you might be wondering what is clip and how does it work, right? Because the clip is a neural network trained on variety of image and text pairs. You can go through this link here with the GitHub. So you can go through this and see what exactly is happening behind the scene. But just for this video, I'm not going to go in depth about the clip, but you, you will get the link there already. So yeah, first thing first, we need to install the necessary packages, right? If you run this, it installs all the necessary packages. And now the next thing we will do is load and download the multimodal data sets, including the text and images from the Wikipedia. So how it is being formulated is, let's say that I want to search Kathmandu, Helsinki, iPhone and Tesla Model S in the uh, Wikipedia, right? I just provided some of this and it will go to this data wiki path. And when I run this, as you can see here, there is the data wiki uh, folder being created and if I just expand this you can see there are four different dot txt if you go inside there there is some text right so that is how it works let me close this and then we are using the open ai so you need to get the open ai embeddings for llm for the text text generation and go to this link if you don't have the account create the account and get the keys and just paste it here that's all and now we will create the text index if you have been following my LLM videos, when we do the embeddings part, we need to store that into some vector store. So we need to create the index. If we go here, now we are going to use the uh, model from the hogging face. We need to install the transformers. So yeah, here are some of the importing things done. We create a quadrant client with a 
location set to memory which means the vector db will be stored in memory i'm not going to persist this memory it's just in the in memory and yeah just the simple directory reader we are reading this particular directory this is how it works in llama index and then we create this service context if you don't create the service context by default it is going to use the one provided by llama index but if you provide your own then it is going to use the one that is being provided so here I'm saying I want to use the LLM from OpenAI and I'm going to use the embed model, this one. So this is really good idea how to provide because I get this information from the blog post where if we provide this syntax or this way, how, what happens is it will be, the model will be downloaded locally and we don't need to download first and do all the things. After that, what we will do is we'll create the quadrant vector store and we give the collection name wikipedia text because this is the text related kind of things and we create the storage context we just provide that vector text vector store that we create here into the storage context and then yeah we create the vector store index so wiki text index so we just pass the text documents from here and we have this storage context we we just created here and then we pass the service context which we created saying that we don't want to use the default provided by llama index once that is done yeah our vector store index is being created and in the last line here what we are doing is we are creating the text query engine when this is run as you can see here there is some download happening you might be thinking okay the download is happening but where it is being stored right or how many text documents are being created you can just go through because this is the just the text document that is being created we have four different wiki articles being extracted so there are four different text documents and the main thing here is because the google collab is running in a container behind the scene there is a machine behind the scene so you can navigate to different folders for example it says here it is downloaded in this particular folder so yeah you can go through here if you go to this particular folder there is models and tokenizers being downloaded and if you go inside there, you can see that this particular embedding model is being stored here. And also the other, other tokenizers are also being stored here. That is how you can navigate between, between different folders. That is the question that some of you ask that, okay, it is downloaded, but where it is downloaded, right? So this is how it is downloaded. The, the reason behind this is now, if you want to reuse it, you know where it is, right? So yeah, the text part is now done. Now we need to go to the image part, right? We need to create the image index. What we do now is again, we are going to use the clip model, as I said you before, and we have to load that particular model, right? As you can see, these are the model parameters input resolution, context length, and vocal size is this one. It's just the random information being provided here. So, yeah, we import the Wikipedia, and all the things are mentioned here. And again, we have this wiki titles the same as before because we are going to extract the text as well as the images from this particular titles and yeah from here you can see this is the normal code you can just go through it by yourself but it is just importing something from wikipedia and then we are just storing somewhere right we are saying Kathmandu Helsinki iPhone this 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 and now we want to show what are the downloaded images you can just run this particular thing and it will show for us so these are the images and now we need to generate the clip embeddings for each image right so before as in the text also we need to now create the embedding clip is used for embedding you can use CUDA but I'm just using here CPU if you want to use GPU then it's up to you with this piece of code what it is doing before is first we are just um, storing the image embeddings in the image embedding dict or dictionary and then the we iterate over the image metadata dictionary and all the things are being shown here what it is doing we pre-process the image with the clip which on squeeze the image tensors and then move the image tensor to the device specified is line two here we are saying the device we need to say two device it's a little bit complicated or technical but if you just don't want to go through the technicality just run this cell it will do the job but if you want to know what is happening behind the scene just go through the lines step by step and the and the comment is also being provided here so yeah we are using the cpu and these are different models that is being provided and this is the one that we are using b 
AIT B32. So you can play around with other models also if you want. Now we need to create a separate clip image embedding index, right? Now we have the embeddings, but now we need to store somewhere. And the collection we are giving it is Wikipedia IMG. Right before we have Wikipedia text for text, and now for image we have IMG. You can just give any name here. But yeah, with this code, as you can see here, we are creating a list of image documents, and we are iterating through different image files, and we are creating the quadrant vector store as before. There is nothing fancy here, and then we are creating the storage context, and now we have the vector store index being created. Once this is done. What we can do now is we need to query through these things, right? So what we do is we have a function for image query. We created three different functions here. One is the retrieve results from the image index, right? So it takes a text query as input and returns the most similar images from the vector store. And here I have kept here similarity top equals to one. I was testing with two, but yeah, you can just provide here five. It will give you the five, but it's up to you how much you want to do. And then what we do next is we plot the image retrieve results. We retrieve that particular things, right? Uh, images, but we need to plot that. So here it takes a list of image retrieval results and create a new figure. That's what it is done. And the image query is the wrapper function call for these two functions. As you can see here, image query, we have this image retrieval results, which gets that particular images and then plot image retrieval which takes that result and plot so we have one function for that so it's easier to run so yeah once this is done then we have uh, text embeddings we have image embeddings and we have a uh, um, vector store for text we have a vector store for images now what we can do is we can start querying and passing some natural language text get multimodal retrieval results both text and images right so yeah i'm saying here what are some of the historical places in Kathmandu? I pass that and I'm saying here image query, query one. As you can see here, this is the image query function. I just pass this particular query into that function and it gets the answer. Similarly, we need to generate the text results also, retrieval results. Yeah, what I'm doing here is just passing that query into the text query engine that I have created when I did or create the vector store for text. So yeah, it is shown here. Okay, text retrieve results. Okay, some of the historical places in Kathmandu includes Kathmandu Darbar Square, Patan Darbar Square, Bhaktapur Darbar Square, and some of the things are mentioned here, right? So if you don't know where is Kathmandu, it is the capital city of Nepal. Just the info here. And then here, this is the image or one temple that is being shown from Kathmandu. That means that we get the right answer here because when I ask what are some of the historical places of Kathmandu, I have four different wiki articles, right? There was Kathmandu, there was Helsinki, there was iPhone, and there was uh, Tesla model, yes. It could have shown something else if it was not correct. But now it is knowing that, okay, I need to go through this particular, particular index and it gets the answer from there. And this 0 0.3284 is the score for that. It is mentioned here. So, uh, Iterate over the image retrieval results and for each result display the corresponding image and its score, right? The title, as you can see here, in the title, we are just providing the score. So the number that is shown here is the score that it gets when it retrieved that uh, particular image. So yeah, it gets things right, but don't blindly believe into this because when I tried with different examples, it was, uh, or you, you can maybe try, what you can try is instead of providing this top k equals to one, you can try three, four, five, because not that many images are being imported. So then it starts providing many images because you ask top five, meaning that it will first show you the top one. Uh, it will be correct. Most of the times I find it being correct. But then when you start providing top k equals to two, three, four, it will get the images based on the score. So the answer will not be correct. For that, what you need to do is provide good quality images into it. So yeah, the next one I said here, what are some of the popular tourist attractions in Helsinki? And yeah, it gets the answer here. Some of the popular tourist attractions in Helsinki includes the Suomalinna, Kotari Island, Lautasari Island, and so on. And it gets this image. Is it really from Helsinki? We can just go through the link. I have provided the link here. Let's go through the link. It's opening here. This is the Helsinki article from Wikipedia. 
if we scroll a little bit down, is the image here? Not still. Let's scroll a little bit down. Little bit down and still down. There should be image. Let's see. Okay. There isn't an image. Okay. Here, there is the image. So this is the art, meaning that, okay, hub is Amanda, a fountain sculpture at the Helsinki Market Square. So it gets from this particular document. So yeah, this is correct. And as you can see here, the score is 0 0.2639. And the next question, okay, which company makes Tesla? I'm just uh, asking random questions. And yeah, it, it goes through this and it gets the answer, meaning that it's working, right? I'm just asking three questions, but there were four different documents, but it didn't provide the answer from the one that I didn't ask. This is really good way of, of retrieving the information. This is really good in such cases. Let's say that you have a web page or you have something where there is images as well as documents documents is also image but let's say you have a text and under the text you have the image and you have thousands of those right what you can do is first create the embeddings store that into some vector store whatever you want to do and then retrieve the information this would be a really good application because somebody might ask some question uh, randomly and then it goes through both of that and get the text information as well as the image information that's really good, right? Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learn something new. Keep learning and yeah, keep exploring. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.